For some reason, a lot of game dev newcomers think their first game is going to be like this. Or this. Or maybe this if they lower their standards big time. But the fact is, there hasn't been one successful artist or creator of any kind who didn't make bad stuff at first. I know this because I was one of those people. <laughs> my first game wasn't perfect, but some people were surprised it was my first game. However, they forgot that I started making my own levels 20 years ago for an old game called Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight, or JK. I spent years working on them for free on a magical website from my youth called the Mazassi Temple. Somehow, the download pages are still online for the world to see, so let me take you on a journey through the life of an awkward 12-year-old who thought the world would bow down to his level design genius. I thought the community would forever celebrate the day that JKGuy009? Was that really my name? <sighs> celebrate the day I decided to make mods. Welcome to my most embarrassing retrospective ever. My first release level was the Battle Arena. This one is pretty funny because I truly thought it was perfectly designed, but it was literally two rooms and a catwalk. It doesn't even exist anymore because it got accidentally overwritten by another level called the Battle Arena. So yeah, that's the kind of originality we're working with here. I really wanted to show you guys this level though. You know what, let me just remake it real quick. I somehow found the old level editor and somehow it still works in Windows 10. Let me just throw something together. Wow, this is taking me back. You know, it's like riding a bike, really. Here are the textures I used. Add a couple doors, add a sky texture, and bam, that literally took me 10 minutes. Here is the battle arena, back from the dead. I spent weeks on this level when I was a kid. After carefully preparing my screenshots and description, I submitted it, saw it on the front page of Mazassi.net, and waited for the downloads to pour in. I checked the rating and saw... Oh. One rating. Five out of ten. Hmm. Well, what are the comments? Oh, only one. I guess I need bot support to make it actually good. The reception did bum me out because I thought for sure it would have been a hit. I actually thought, it's so simple, yet so genius. This will be the most popular deathmatch level ever. Oh well, I thought, my next level will be even better. This one will actually have secrets and a theme. It will be called the Lost Sand City. Unfortunately, this level truly is the Lost Sand City due to a corrupted zip folder, so I only have these two screenshots to show you. This was the first time I actually tried to add a bit of my personality to something, which included adding small easter eggs to make it feel like the level was haunted. For instance, if you sat on the throne, it would kill you. I also thought I was a genius for making the entrance to the throne room look like an evil face. I even mention it in the .txt file. So surely a work of art like this would get at least, oh. That's the only comment, huh? Hmm. Well, maybe making levels isn't for me. But wait, a level contest? This is my chance. Now, I could have used this opportunity to actually push myself and to put in the work required to make something meaningful. But why would I do that when I could use the Create Terrain feature in JK Edit? I threw on a rock texture, hit a button, titled it Tatooine's Mountains, and shipped that baby faster than you can say, I don't like sand. To this day, I still don't know why I took such a cheap shortcut, but the results speak for themselves. As you may have guessed, I didn't win anything in the contest, and I didn't even get any ratings or comments. I was actually pretty close to giving up at this point. It was just too much rejection to be fun anymore. It's true, my levels were bad, but I didn't think so. I just didn't have the experience to realize that, or the skills to make them better. Fortunately, inexperience is temporary, but only if you keep going. On a whim, I took a break from level design and decided to mess around with lightsaber textures. I noticed how popular custom lightsabers were in the mod section, so I wanted to try it out. The only image program I knew about was Microsoft Paint, so I tried a couple things that looked bad, then landed on a simple strategy. Just draw lines. I called this mod Improved Saber Colors and released it without thinking much about it. Normally I checked my level downloads every day, but didn't really care to do that this time. A week later, I checked the numbers. Holy crap. I had actually hit quadruple digits. I seriously couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I had happy comments. Some of them asked why there were so many downloads until they tried it and gave my mod 10 out of 10s. I even admitted in the comments that I didn't put a lot of work into it. 
This release taught me two important things. First, knowing what the audience actually wanted was an essential part of research. And second, people don't care how much work you put into something or if you took shortcuts. The success puzzled me, but it also lit a fire. I remember sorting the full list of mods by most downloaded and just seeing my little seven kilobyte baby file on the first page pumped me up. I wanted to keep making levels and sure enough, there was another level contest to prove myself. This time would be different. I knew I was gonna win a spot in the level pack, and that's because it was capture the flag levels only, which weren't as popular, which meant less competition. I worked hard on a unique idea called the JK Mansion. I spent days figuring out the convoluted scripts to make the flag stuff actually work and keep score. I even made little vending machines and a sweet logo on the outside. I really did put my heart into it. And sure enough, on April 16th, 2001, I was not selected to be part of the level pack. Yep, not there. I also want to add that I wasn't competing against hundreds of skilled level designers. There were only seven entries total, and I still couldn't earn a spot in a free level pack for a four-year-old game. Downloads were an improvement for my first levels, but the comments were lukewarm. I was tired. I decided to take a break and try other things. During that time, I played lots of games, including Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, which got me into skateboarding. Even though I loved it and it took up all my free time, the idea of making levels and mods still popped into my head. Two years after the release of the JK Mansion, I decided to check out some newer levels by my friends in the community. Whoa, this was amazing! Huge expansive worlds with shopping malls, casinos, and a weird star theme park ride? It was so inventive and fun to explore, and I just knew I had to make more levels. I couldn't even remember my old password for that stupid username, so I got a new account and started again with a clean slate. My sixth released mod was a map called Space Colony Inc., a hotel space station spanning three floors. It had it all, cafeteria, dance floor, swimming pool, Teletubby, Saber Arena, Security Room, Creepy Bilbo, and even a Hollow Deck. I spent months on it and used lots of public 3D models and textures available on Mazassi to spice things up. It wasn't a Star Wars level anymore, it was a new, interesting world to explore. I released it on July 13th, 2003, and it did pretty well. I got around a thousand downloads and a 9 out of 10 with 9 people reviewing it. The comments were positive and made me feel all warm and fuzzy, so I just had to read them over and over again. Wow, this was fun, I thought. I knew I wanted to keep going and keep making levels. In fact, after playing the game Max Payne, I discovered that the developer, Remedy Entertainment, had released all the textures for mod makers to use for free. I decided to make a small metropolis called Phoenix Suburban City. The title doesn't make sense now that I think about it, but it was just a small city block with things like a hotel, a sewer system, and a laundromat. This was also the first time I enlisted help, asking the coding wizards on the forums to help me with a day-night system and little things like turning on a shower or drawing the curtains open. I even put a little easter egg behind a wall that I'm pretty sure no one found. I released it, excited to see what people thought, and something happened that I never thought would happen. My level was chosen as level of the week. The same people who denied my contest entries were promoting it on the front page of Mazassi. 27 people rated it for a 9 out of 10, and the comments were almost unanimous. I had arrived, and I'd finally made a good level. It only took four years of releasing bad levels while reading disparaging remarks. I didn't stop there, however. I went on to release Dereliction, inspired by System Shock 2. It wasn't too crazy, just some unnerving dark rooms on a space station. Downloads were low, but the praise was high. I guess you could say that I had fans now who couldn't wait to play a level with my name on it. That blew my mind. My last released level was a haunted campground called Camp Marshall. Empty cabins dotted the creepy landscape. I loved leaning into the horror and atmospheric elements. I wanted to creep out the players with knives on the wall or unlabeled VHS tapes. The thing I was most proud of was a hidden torture chamber underneath the administration building. Unsuspecting players were welcomed by a loud scream, a lava torture pit, and a slide into the depths of hell. Okay, let's start. Go in that cap. Do you want me to press it? Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> okay, 
This is awesome. I'll never forget the feeling of seeing some random people online playing my level, joining their game, and showing them the secret lair and explaining how I made it. It was just one of those rewarding feelings you carry with you for the rest of your career. So that does it for my early mod retrospective. I wanted to make this video to show all the aspiring game developers out there that every journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. My first game was actually not my first game, and even with that mod experience and years of film school training, it still didn't do that well. But I kept going and released The First Tree, a game that changed my life. John Romero's first game was a little thing called Scout Search, and it wasn't anything to write home about. But I'm glad he kept going because after 20 finished games, he went on to help create Wolfenstein 3D and Doom. And sorry to break it to you, random guy in the comments, but Stardew Valley was not Eric Baroni's first game. This was his first game. I'm telling you, there has never been a successful artist who didn't make and finish lots of art. I get it why we're all scared to fail, I really do, but it's an unavoidable part of the creative process. Embrace the failure, learn from it, and keep making games. It's the only way you'll improve, and it's the only way you'll make your dreams come true.